The barbershop in the African-American community is more than a place to get a nice trim. It's also a place of brotherhood. For Black History Month, we're showing the chronicles and the culture of the Michigan Barber School in Detroit by exploring its past and present. From the technique to the textbook. What is the mechanical process when using soap and water or detergent? Cleaning. Cleaning. The craft is being honed at the Michigan Barber School in Detroit. Come July of this year, we'll be in our uh, 73rd year. The parents of Saul Green, Forrest and Mamie Green, opened the Michigan Barber School in 1947. Before making the move to Detroit, Forrest Green grew up near Atlanta, Georgia. His father was a barber. Um, my dad went to high school there and went to Morehouse College, came to Detroit, part of the black migration in the 1930s. Forrest Green held several jobs, but his true talent remained being a barber. He maintained the spirit of an entrepreneur, something not easy to accomplish during these times when African Americans could not obtain loans or financial assistance the traditional way through a bank. With their own money and the support of other black business owners in what was then Black Bottom and Paradise Valley, this husband and wife made their dream a reality. And he saw this as an opportunity to uh, create something that didn't exist in Detroit, a place where uh, principally African Americans could, be, uh, could learn the barbering skills. The Michigan Barber School was originally located on Hastings in Black Bottom. When the area was leveled in the 1950s, the Green family relocated to Adams Street, where Comerica Park now stands. In 1964, the Green family moved here to this location at Grand River and Joy Road on Detroit's west side. It's worth noting the school even survived the riots in 1967 without any major damage. For a family-owned business to survive more than 70 years, given all the circumstances, is something quite remarkable. Also keep in mind, the renaissance we are seeing in downtown Detroit has not made its way to this neighborhood, like many others in the city of Detroit, could use more support. I can't tell you the number of times people come up to me because they've seen me here for much of the 73 years <laughs> at, one, at one stage or another, and they talk about having come here as children and their fathers bringing them here and they're walking in with their kids. And so there has been an intergenerational impact the Michigan Barber School has had on this community. The community impact is one reason why the Michigan Barber School is honored at the Charles H. Wright Museum. It was also very, very much a place of brotherhood, almost like a club. Douglas McCray, an educator at the museum, is alluding to barber shops in many ways being a sanctuary in the African-American community. Going back in time to the black migration and even further, it was a place of community where you could feel safe. Many times people who had maybe been in the barber shop the day before would come back to the barber shop the next day just to hang out to see who's coming in today to, to talk, play checkers. It is a place where uh, folk come together, particularly black men come together and are able to not only take care of their uh, uh, tonsorial needs, their uh, the barbering needs, but it's a place where people gather and where there's community conversation. Everything from um, politics to uh, international news to sports. At the Michigan Barber School today, the culture lives on. Putting the life of someone in our chair and just changing the whole day up. Giving opportunity to those who may need a second chance in life. The teachers are very supportive of us and we are very supportive of each other when it comes to cutting. The barber shop to a lot of men in the city of Detroit is a very vital and important um, pillar in the place in the community. To many others like Forrest Green decades ago, simply had the dream of giving people a nice haircut. Detroit is the uh, leader in this country. So what we produce in terms of barbers, we affect, um, we affect the entire United States. <laughs> that was really interesting. It's so fascinating, the combination of, of being really skilled at yes. uh, in being a barber, mm -hmm. but also having uh, that connection with other men 
And occasionally women, too. Yeah, I mean, same deal goes for hair salons, mm -hmm. uh, where women go there, they converse about politics, work, marriage, etc. Um, it's Again, it's a sanctuary where you can just sit down in a chair, have your hair done, if you will, mm -hmm. and just unload about life and just leave with more perspective. Well, and at a certain, at to certain times in our history, those places were much needed places mm -hmm. of a safe sanctuary yeah. where um, people could come together and really discuss uh, real ideas about changing this world and significant things. And when we're talking about history, Dina, it's important to connect the past and the present because the two seem to have a lot in common. Mm. Yeah, interesting story, Josh. It's uh, boy, Detroit has such a uh, such a vital role in our history and going forward, of course. Mm -hmm. A lot of history, indeed.